Hey everybody, good Thursday morning. Chief Meteorologist Brian Penovich here. Let's talk about Nicole. Now, it's going to be downgraded today probably to a tropical depression. Doesn't really matter. We're not going to get caught up in the name of what the system is. It's really going to be a focus of the impacts because the circulation, whatever's left of it, is going to spread what we call wind shear into the Carolinas. Now, you can see the circulation of what is Nicole basically right over Florida. But the warm front here, you see it associated with the coast. That to, to me is a really key part of this forecast because that's the leading edge of the warm humid air that's going to be moving inland tonight into tomorrow morning. And that's going to supply the instability or the fuel for thunderstorms. Now, the circulation, the bands to the northeast of the center, you already see there's a tornado watching effect right here just to the north and east. That's kind of the pattern we're going to see later today as that warm front pushes in. I will quickly show you the track of the system as it pushes north and east because it will be heading off towards uh, the Western Carolinas and dissipating notice. It doesn't even really make it all the way um, to the Carolinas. That's because that's where it will stop being a tropical entity. So that's why I didn't want you to get caught up in that because this track further west, in fact, will be more problematic for tornadic weather because everywhere north and east of the track, this is where you see the severe weather risk going into today or tonight, I should say, and tomorrow um, on Friday. And just to show you where that severe weather risk is again, We'll pop it up there. That's the risk today, which you know already shows a medium risk along the coast and then almost to the Charlotte area. Then we go into tomorrow and you can see a big chunk of the area. I actually think this will get pulled to the west a little bit because the track is further west. That would pull this warm front a little bit further west. So don't be surprised to see this extended back this way a little bit more and the, the orange or the medium threat shifted back to the west a little bit more. We'll go to day three as this pushes up into the northeast. Um, this will be heading up in this direction. It'll be dissipated by then, so not much to see there. So let's start talking about the future cast and where I think we're going to see that severe weather risk. All right, here. so here's the future cast. We'll go through today. So those folks that are going to the Panthers game tonight, uh, this will be the key part to kind of time out the rain. Now, it's not going to rain out rain the entire time during the Panthers game. Let me definitely tell you that. There's just going to be waves of rain, but you're going to want to have the poncho. So we'll go through this morning. I'm going to stop this thing. Eh, we'll stop this thing roughly around noon today. Noon today, uh, a lot of what you see over this is just going to be clouds. I think the first batch of rain is actually going to be this batch right in here. Um, that's going to be to our south. So here we are at noon. If you look at the top there, uh, that's the timing right around noon time. We'll go into the evening hours. We'll uh, stop this around tailgate time. A lot of folks will be tailgating about 6. The worst weather is still to our south. But you see these bands? These are the ones you got to watch for tornadic weather because these are all going to be north and east of the center which will be near Tallahassee at the time um, and the first showers probably light showers heavier showers likely in the mountains and foothills this evening we'll go game times around uh, 8 15 there's probably going to be some showers in the vicinity but probably light rain at this at juncture the heavier stuff will be to the west as we get later into the game that's when i think we'll see pockets of rain again probably not particularly heavy but it's going to be blowing misty kind of drizzly weather again the rough weather is still down in here notice the winds beginning to pick up as well as we get into the overnight hours this is one o'clock in the morning we're starting to watch these bands develop to the south those are the ones that these individual bands because the warm front is likely going to be in here by then pulling warm humid air to the west and ushering in these bands so there's two o'clock in the morning three four so there could be some waves that we got to watch during the overnight hours wouldn't be shocked to see overnight tornado watches um, not out of the realm of possibility. We get into the sunrise hour. Here comes another batch of, of showers. This one's around 8 a.m. That one potentially could have some rotation in it. And then we'll go again further into the morning. That band shifts east again. Look at those. Those All those potentially have rotation in them. And then we go to 2 p.m. The final band is going to be passing through in the middle of the afternoon. It looks like some kind of lull develops there. And this is right around 4 or 5 o'clock. So another band during the evening hours. So you can see it's going to come at us in waves, not a constant rain. Um, and then by the evening, this is around seven o'clock. There's still some rain starts to push off to the east. And by overnight, Friday night into, into Saturday, it starts to move out. So I'll loop this again. And this is a 60 hour loop, by the way, shows the track just west of the mountains, which actually is a optimal track for tornadoes for us, just to be completely transparent and clear. That's when we see it come up from the Panhandle, Florida like that. That's typically when we see tornado outbreaks. Think of Fred, think of Gaston, Francis, previous events that have produced 
um, tornado outbreaks. Also want to notice, look at the mountains, that ramping up of moisture into the mountains. This is going to produce widespread rain into the mountains and foothills. This is why there is a flash flood watch currently up for this area. And that honestly is the area we've got to watch the most for flash flooding. So let's take a look at some of the wind and rain that we could, the totals at least, based on this track. This is a look at the maximum wind gust expected right now through uh, basically Saturday night. So this will be through the entire event, 72 hours. You can see across most of the Piedmont, you're seeing gusts between 30 and maybe up to 40 miles per hour. Again, gust, not sustained. In the mountains, a little bit less, but some of the ridge tops could see a little bit more. As far as rainfall is concerned, I'll go hour by hour through this, and you can see it ramping up. Um, this is through this evening. We go through tomorrow uh, about 2 a.m., and then we get into the morning hours, and look at the totals in the mountains. I'm going to go out to 72 hours here. You can see these places, the southeast facing slopes. I mean, some of these are approaching six, seven inches of rain, um, and then three to four inches along the escarpment, maybe east, and then in the Piedmont, probably one to two, so a little bit lower for the Piedmont. So this is why the flash flood risk is really all about this area right in here. Here, this rain is much needed and actually probably will not cause widespread flood issues. The biggest issue for the Piedmont is going to be that tornado risk. As I mentioned, this is a significant tornado parameter. You can see tomorrow morning, you know, into the afternoon, we've got that, that instability moving up into the region and so that's the area right there you see all of that and if i if i quickly look at some of the soundings here um, this will uh, clearly show marginal tornado risk but that's your typical setup for tropical systems let's real quickly look at the um the helicity tracks basically the rotational tracks here I'll move the map up just enough so we can see this and we'll show the same thing you can see some of these tracks in there again not super strong ones but you're seeing some of them develop across the region so that's what we'll be watching today, tonight, into tomorrow. Get your yard ready, clear out those storm drains, get the gutters ready. The biggest concern for the area east of the mountains is going to be severe weather, strong winds with the storms, the line of storms and tornadoes. Uh, the wind and rain threat overall is not that bad for areas east of the mountains. For the mountains, the big threat's flash flooding. So it's kind of the tale of two stories. Flash flooding for the western part of the state and tornadoes for the central and eastern part of the state. And again, remember, even though um, some of these might have tornadoes, there might be strong winds in there. That's why we say severe weather risk is about straight line wind damage and tornadoes within these bands that are moving through. And you can see there could be, I would say right now, it looks like maybe a three or four distinct bands could move through. One early on Friday morning, one mid-morning, and then one probably in the afternoon or evening. Stay weather aware. We'll keep you up to date as we go through the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. Um, again, the worst weather is going to be tonight into early Friday.